Hello, everyone, and welcome to Should Suns Rise. My name is Victor, and I will be your captain this evening. Um, so this is a Once More Into the Void actual play. Uh, Once More Into the Void is by Ray Najati. Um, you can purchase it um, through, I think you can get it through their itch page right now. And there was also a Kickstarter from it, which is how I got this back, this backer. Um, it is a fantastic game. I'm very excited for uh, to share it with you guys. Um, it is a uh, Firebrands game. <laughs> and so uh, this is truly GMless. We're going to be just be going at this like a bunch of amazing cast members together. Um, <laughs> and I'm really excited. So uh, once more, my name is Victor. I use he and they pronouns. And let's go around the table and introduce our uh, our cast right now. And then we'll give you guys a taste of our characters a little bit later. I'm going to jump in. Uh, and introduce myself first. I've taken it. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Havana, and I use any and all pronouns, and I am a TTRPG performer. Uh, today, I will be playing Liana, who uses he, they pronouns, and he is the Bound playbook, which you will learn a little bit more about today. And I will pass it over to Jay. Hi, I'm Jay Justice, and I'll be playing as Melita Nuru. She is the steadfast, and uh, she's a very reliable person. You'll find out more about her later. <laughs> hey, everybody. My name's Katrina, and I am portraying Leo the Strange, uh, a very interesting character who has a very secret and uh, angsty past, especially for an android. And last, and most certainly not least, the most beautiful, the most pretty, the most amazing, it is I, Cleric. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Cleric34, uh, just Cleric. I use he, they pronouns. I'm playing uh, Lopez Midox, who uses they, them pronouns, and uh, I'm playing The Broken. Yeah, that's all I got. I think I don't know if we're trying to do anything else. <laughs> My brain just immediately like, that's it. Yeah, and I just want to give a, a shout out to our wonderful producer, Mayor, who will be um, making this game a little bit interesting for us. Uh, now, before I introduce our enemy to you, uh, as an actual play, we'd love to be engaging. And so um, we're upping the tension of this game. Uh, after each mini game, that we play there are card pool card pulls that either increase the loyalty between everyone or make our enemies stronger now the numbers on these cards are very important for our final mission however we aren't going to know what those numbers are we will know if we have cards in our hand we will know that the enemies have cards in their deck but we don't know how powerful our enemies are or how powerful we have become throughout this journey. <laughs> and I do love that tension. You know, when we were deciding it, it was like, wow, this would be so much fun. But now that you vocalized it and we're now going forward, I've, I'm so tense from this jump. <laughs> Aha, pain is coming. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, we are thinking about a way that... Um, the audience might be able to cut the tension or raise it if by telling us the numbers, but we'll uh, get to that maybe in our second game. We'll make sure that these are a little bit, uh, their introduction is very important after all. <laughs> okay, folks, so before um, we got started, so before we start um, this amazing journey into uh, what's probably gonna be a wonderful space opera, uh, the enemy that we are facing is very important. And so our enemy is the android army and their leader, Cordon Legum. Now, they are trying to set back time to a place where they can rule. And the stakes are all of organic life. So uh, with that being said, uh, we can sort of, uh, in the Once More Into the Void, there's an extended game. That's what we'll be playing over these next few weeks. 
And there are questions that each member of the crew has to answer. And since I don't really have, uh, since I'll be guiding us through recruitment and introducing all of the crew to you guys, I'll go ahead and answer my question first. My question is, you once had a heroic reputation. How did the enemy secretly help you gain it? Um, Anarch, the captain of our broken crew, only became a hero after the enemies destroyed his squad and he took the place of the most heroic member and faked himself under that identity for years. And uh, that is the captain's enemy question. And I hope that that helps color all of the interactions to come. It's now it's time for recruitment. And we'll start by recruiting, well, the broken is in the name. <laughs> Cleric, why don't you introduce your character to us? So I'm gonna set the scene a bit for everyone, you know, have fun setting the scene. So we kind of zoom in on this very much as like, this like a uh, desert planet. Uh, with like kind of most artly, most obviously kind of vibes of like Tatooine of this this sand like planet, and suddenly there is like you see a figure kind of just like walking through the sand, like hood covered, uh, like completely in a poncho, like kind of just walking into the sun, just dragging like a giant space worm behind them. With like as like the wind kind of picks up, you see like the. <sighs> like when goes to the side you see like a weapon strapped to their side like a space like a laser gun uh, on there but like a suit of like armor or a, a space suit on the legs you see them dragging it out and they finally like enter this hut that's in the middle of the sand like just this very much as dune house and finally as they drag like the carcass in and like take off their uh take off their hood you see kind of just this space suit like like kind of a mix of like Spartan armor and like Corian armor for Mass Effect kind of kind of vibe of like this kind of spacesuit with all these like uh, militaristic yet like gauges on them gauges that like say if you zoom like kind of look at it uh, it said have like temperature have like oxygen level CO2 levels like things of that sort all along the side uh, just kind of monitoring it and uh, as they walk into the into this room you see them kind of look at it and on this but on their left kind of chest, on their left side, is the scratch, like a very scratched off name tag that looks like uh, dog tags insignia with a scratched off last name, but all it says is Lopez on the side. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of uh, the look of it. The uh, look of the broken uh, Lopez Midox kind of gets in, sits just like, drives a carcass and just like kind of sits down. All right. Well, I love the description of the ravaged remains of your home. <laughs> so um, I think the bits that stand out to the captain, um, because Anarch is uh, making his way through the desert as well, sort of watching this from afar. Um, Anarch is a very tall uh uh, my friends would call him probably like a wet cigarette of a man. <laughs> and um, he's got like, he looks, he, he just looks like you shouldn't trust him. Um, he has, tat he has uh, concentric circle tattoos on his exposed shoulders. And he wrings his hands that have black gloves on them. And despite what looks like tense body, um, oh, language, that's the word. Despite tense body language, um, he's got a very charming smile on. So he walks in and sort of notes that like the metal of this place is rusted and just sort of doesn't seem very well taken care of. Mm -hmm. And um, so tell me, 
Mm. What about Lopez's current state shocks the captain? I think as you walk in, you're expecting to see like who Lopez usually like Lopez's old look, which was like just bald head, like kind of some scars on the face, but like uh, very much out. They're six foot. They used to be like six foot three of tall, very, a very brolic person. Uh, but as you walk in, you, instead of seeing like usual Lopez eyes, which usually every time they turned to you, it was like, like this smile, like this kind of like, come on, like, what do you want now? Kind of look, uh, you see, instead of a look, just a suit of armor kind of turn around to look at you and just barely even like eyes registered, uh, like barely even registering the eyes that are now staring at you. All right. And what behavior of yours disgusts or saddens me i guess the immediate like as soon as you walk in uh you walk in and lopez kind of like turns around stares at you and just like growls like get out which usually not even then would yobas would usually just be like even when they didn't like you at certain times they were like what do you want or something like that or just like quiet indignation of you walking in it's an immediate and visual just get out come on buddy just want to talk you are lucky that I don't shoot you right in between your eyes that's my Lopez pulls out the laser and is just like get I can't. They're back. And how is that my concern? I need you. You need me. Puts the gun back to the side. You needed me to hold, to blow up that factory. You needed me to always be by your side. And you know where that got me? Do you know what that got me? Look at me. I s- this, is I what, see you. this is what following you did. I think I've suffered enough. I think I've, I think I've been needed by you enough. I know you miss it. I miss it. I miss what? Lasers shooting at me, always having to pull your ass out of the fire, always being what everyone needs. I'm good in my little hut here. I'm safe. I am fine. I am good. Cleric, do you want to read the questions of the broken ass? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, True. Uh, The captain broken described the home settings. Uh, Oh, what evidence of our time together do I try to hide from you? And what weakness of mine do you exploit? Ooh. <laughs> I think despite all of your anger and everything, um, I feel like when we were traveling before, we were basically traveling the galaxy, like the spear tip of a movement against this mad scientist. And um, there was a place that we rested like that, 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 like we took a, we took a moment to finally just be human for a second. And um, there are pictures from our mission from that resting. Mm. Um, and I, you know, I take a look and I'm just like, you really can't be pleased 
being all by yourself out here. Being out here, I don't hurt. And I take the photo from your hand and kind of look at it. And is it a question? Is it a photo of like the whole crew? I think it's a photo of the whole crew. Yeah. And it's just like, when I'm, I'm not the same person I was here. And even if I was to go meet, go with you, I don't even know if I'm the same person here. I don't know if I can be the person you think I am. Because mm-hmm. right now I am fine. I'm, and puts the photo down. Kind of just like looks away from you. And I think what Anarch is going to try to use as your weakness to manipulate you. Anarch is offering, Anarch just offers like, I'm bringing everyone back together. You don't have to be your old self, but it's better than rotting here alone. But hey, you know, you want to be by yourself. You don't even want to take a chance that I can help make your life easier. I can leave. That's what you want, right? I know you, Anarch. Turns around and just like points a finger right on your chest. You are a coward. And I also know that you are a manipulative son of a bitch. So the only reason, the only reason I'd even step foot on a ship with you on it because I know each and every one of these dumbasses will follow your lead and someone has to make sure that you don't fuck up again. Um, If this is okay, Mm -hmm. Anarch um, reaches up and just sort of covers the hand that's like like poking him in the chest. Mm -hmm. And he just sort of like, he's just tries to squeeze it he doesn't know if you can even feel it and he's just like and it's not like an aggressive squeeze it's like a it's like a like just almost like that little bit of emotion creeps past that like frustrating smile and his smarmy little voice drops down and he's like see I need you. You're going to keep me in line. And um, I think to begin the little uh, moments that happened during the recruitments, I'm going to admit feelings uh, that we never thought that we'd say out loud. I fucked up. I lost my family at the beginning of this. I never thought that I wouldn't have the time to say this. But you're like my family. Mm. And we're lucky we had the time to say this. So let's make it so we have more time to be a fucked up little family. takes the hand that you're holding, puts it right on your shoulder, grips it, and then punches you straight in the gut. Um, Yeah, uh, Anarch coughs, and um, I think he, like, he folds over and he looks up with, like, a smirk, and he's like, love that sentiment. I knew you missed me. Where's the ship? Uh, well, 
We're going to have to walk to it. Fuck. <sighs> We're going to have to walk to it. That is really. Right. And Cleric, you choose one other moment. Uh, let me scroll down here. Uh, I think I'll do. One of us reveals scars or injuries the other one didn't know about. Uh, and so this will just tie into uh, Lopez kind of looking at you. It's like, <clears throat> listen, I have to be, if I'm doing this, if I'm doing this, you need to know. I... And kind of turns and like takes off the full like poncho that they're wearing. And so you see the full suit of just like armor. And then you also, you would make the immediate connection that this is like a light, like half life support suit, half like, uh, like military armor that like Lopez kind of made themselves and fashioned. And so the realization that kind of dawns on you, but Lopez will say out loud is like, mm. I got this armor that I'm wearing. It, I'm bad already, but I'm also this is me. The suit, the doctors tried to fix me up since uh, after that the last mission we went on tried, I didn't really make it out completely. And they, uh, put me in this suit that helps me walk and breathe and function. Uh, I think that smile finally slides completely off of Anarch's face. That might be more infuriating to Lopez than anything because it's this look of like... (laughs) Anarch's kind of an asshole, so it's this look of pity, sadness, and frustration. And he's just like, I... Yeah. I didn't realize it went this bad. I can still shoot fine. And that's all you need me for, right? I... You said that you'd help them not make bad choices with me. So I need you for that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't this... What? Sorry. No, what? Doesn't this need, like, a lot of upkeep? Like, if you leave here, are you still going to be able to... I know my limitations. And I know as long as I keep everything in order and do everything I'm supposed to. It'll be fine. Uh, You know, if you're really so mad at me, um, you should teach me how to help you do maintenance. I will punch you in the gut again. You are never, ever touching me or this armor. I wouldn't trust you with a butter knife. I wouldn't trust you with a boppet. All right. I won't trust you and start walking out the door just listening to everything. <laughs> I wouldn't trust you with. So in this moment, while we're leaving, and this doesn't have to be said directly to me. I just want to know, what do you still love about me? I love that you're still a confident asshole. <laughs> like, it's, it's that moment of like, wow, this person, no matter what, still thinks they're the most, like, they're the baddest in the room. That they, have, they hold all the cards. And somehow that is both reassuring and frightening. That nothing has changed. But, like, even if as everything has gone to shit, 
they still think they hold all the cards. Gotcha. You can ask your question to me if you like. Uh, um, trying to find it. It's under ending the fall. Yes. Uh, what faded hope do you see in me? Um, I see that despite everything I did, even at your angriest, uh, you're still joining me. So I feel that even though I have fucked up, there's still the chance that I can make moves to make amends. All right. And now we draw our cards. Oh, no. This is... (laughs) So I'm drawing a card for both of you, right? Yep. Who wants to go first? We can draw for the broken first. All right. The broken has a red card. Fuck! (laughs) (laughs) Good start. (laughs) All right, uh, Cleric, what happens when we draw a red card? Well, the enemy that we're fighting gets stronger. <laughs> and we get a brief glimpse of the enemy and how they become more terrifying. Um, I think they know that you're, that you're recruiting and that you recruited <laughs> and that you recruited, uh, that you recruited me back. Ooh. So there's there there is there is a watchful eye upon us. I love that. Yeah. And all right. The card for Anarch is also Please. red. This is bullshit. End the stream. <laughs> I'm done. I Straight up, I'm holes. done. This is a great oh. start, y'all. We're end, doing yeah. we're doing wonderful. This end is great. Stream. Keep it up. <laughs> end the stream. So I'm gonna say. Uh, that while we know the surveillance, uh, while we know the surveillance on us now, um, something uh, when we're leaving, uh, while we head to the spaceport, um, we do see a glimpse of like an old enemy, and uh, and so someone that we definitely that was very hard to kill the first time and we definitely thought we left uh, that we definitely thought we killed are you describing to the t100 is that what you describe <laughs> well i want to leave that open for y'all in oh. case we draw more wonderful red cards <laughs> And that is the recruitment mission for our broken. How are we gonna end it? Yeah, you know what? Just and as we're just going down, Lopez is just listening, listing every single thing they would entrust Anarch with. Perfect. And Anarch is. I feel like Anarch has started to respond back. Well, well, that's on the ship, so I guess you're gonna have to do that for me. <laughs> I wouldn't trust you with playing cards. I wouldn't trust you with an oven. I wouldn't trust you with a, uh, a Galarian three pronged uh, synergizer, which is like Come the on. babiest thing. Yeah, um, but like, I wouldn't trust you with a book. I wouldn't trust you. Uh, to look, I wouldn't trust you with a hook. I wouldn't trust you. All right, hop on pop. Come on. We have that other was like a Dr. Seuss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, as we fade on on that scene, we are going in and we're meeting the next member of our crew. And that is the strange Katrina. Will you go ahead and introduce your character for us? When we open on the scene, we're in a very sterile lab, but it's also very green as well. And it doesn't take long when you uh, just glance around to notice that this uh, particular lab is not a med bay or a computer lab of any sort, but uh, in fact, a, a bio lab. Um, everything growing in here uh, is a natural um, resource of sorts. Uh, in fact, there is only one thing that is entirely uh, artificial uh, in this lab, and that are those are the uh, small, kind of rounded little robots that like they walk around on about like two legs, and they have two arms, 
um, and they have these little rounded heads and visors in front and they're walking around and tending to the plants uh, and feeding them, watering them, uh, etc. cetera. Um, there is something that kind of combines the two elements of being alive and being the coldness of a, an artificial life form. And that particular person is sitting in the very middle of the room at a desk surrounded by other plants with a large tube coming out of the back of their neck. Uh, they are filing paperwork on a tablet as though that tube is not there and as though a giant helmet is not on their head supporting that tube. Uh, and that's where you're at. Awesome. Um, I think uh, what Anarch finds in the lab, Anarch was never really good at uh, being in any places with delicate instruments. So they had their arms like right in front of them they're keeping a wide berth of these tables and I think, uh, and, and trying not to step on any robots. Um, I think the thing that uh, really makes the laboratory sort of uh, stand out to him is that uh, with these tubes, there seems to be like more on the walls that seem to be like flowing different types of liquids and everything. And it casts the laboratory in like different lights um, and as he approaches, he sort of reaches out and does shave and a haircut right on the helmet. Is that you? The person tilts their head just slightly and then back up. And then the front of the panel kind of just like comes off like that and lowers. And then the person looks up and says, it certainly is me. Leo. Hey. Um, this is impressive. It's a day job. Sounds like you hate it. I like my daytime work. It's quieter here. There's a little less socialization required. Well, the Leo I remember loved socialization. Didn't really like isolation that much. The Leo you remember was a different person. I've gained so much more knowledge in the time I have been departed from our crew, I suppose you could have called it. I'm smarter now. I like the day job. Well, what, what type of important work are you doing? Today I'm working on repopulating what may be very soon an extinct plant on the surface level of the moon below. If I can revive this plant, the fauna that feed on it will thrive and also not go extinct. And that will cause a major domino effect to take down the full system. But it all starts with this plant. Mm. Anarch just looks, uh, Anarch goes from like looking like really like schmoozy to very uncomfortable about like, oh, that actually sounds very important. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah like i really think like finding in this state just sort of brings home that like oh this is not the leo that i used to know um <laughs> and i think he sort of wrings his hands a little bit and like there's the squeak of like a little bit of leather against leather new gloves that he's wearing he's just like well uh i have a job something is happening and i know that i need to ask you to join me captain as you see i also have a job 
Yes. Certainly there's someone else you can find. It is about your maker. What about him? He's back. But the chances of him returning are 5,614 to one, which I suppose is a very small number now that I think about it. When you take into, you know, at, when you take into account like the whole of the galaxy, kind of. Leo takes a moment to look over and survey the work, all the little bots doing their work, um, and looks down at the tablet that they were working on and hits three buttons. Uh, and the droids continue doing their thing. Leo looks back up and sort of folds their hands in front of them and stares at the captain and says, Explain to me the gravity of this mission. Glad to. Um, <laughs> I think um, what Leo notices is that Anarch is very relieved the second that you ask that. Um, and again, like that, that smile comes very quick back to his face. Well, I have it on good authority that your maker is back and there are more of, uh, well, not yous. Nothing could ever be you, but something that I think he's trying to catch that flash in a pan again. I can leave the lab right away. But I do not want this mission to turn out the same way it did before. This is the only time I think we should get back together. And only for this kind of emergency. Uh, Anarch sort of does like a hard gulp. He's like, you all are really mad at me. Huh? I believe the crew has reason to feel certain emotions over what happened. I prefer not to. And are just so sad. And I think that I think that hasn't changed for him in a long time. I think whenever Leo says something very like uh, about trying to distance them, uh, themselves from like more organic feelings, Anarch has always looked very sad. Um, and, um, I think in that moment to build upon that emotion, I think right now someone comes into the lab and treats Leo like they are less than human. Uh, maybe like a, like an overseer for like bigger projects and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say like, a, a fully like flesh being overseer, seer, a sentient of sorts. Um, perhaps like a taller man uh, comes in and asks why Leo is unplugged. And before Leo answers, because Leo delivers answers very clearly and you know how they speak uh, with um, care, uh, they are spoken over, kind of brushed to the side uh, and the supervisor takes the pad as well. Um, and maybe even uh, uh, kind of looks over and says like, uh, well, it looks like you've gotten this part wrong again. And they kind of like, like set out this, like uh, this um, record perhaps of Leo's research. Um, and there's parts of the research that are, you know, everything to do with the math and science of it all is perfect. But when it comes to the behavioral notes, there's, it's clear, um, and this person points it out, that Leo can't connect 
with why certain plants behave the way they do and perhaps even like intermingle and breed the way they do. Um, so um, when with these moments, uh, we get a choice of how they, how they uh, get an outcome. Um, and uh, you get to choose uh, one of these outcomes. Yeah, and I think Leo is going to pointedly stare at this biologist. Uh, Leo is not a very violent, uh, you know, android, um, but they also you know, they don't uh, enjoy being talked down to. Um, and so I think Leo will slowly turn and just blankly stare and ask, is that all? And just keep staring. And hopefully that would be, that'll be a cue for Anarch to join in and be just as eerie. Oh yeah. Like Leo can see the way that Anarch is very bad at hiding his, ba his body language except for like his face but he, uh leo can see the way like from the toes up like the the way that the body tenses the way that he turns like he's about to just sort of let fly all the rude words that leo knows that anarch has and then he takes the cue and it comes back and it goes in and it's just this very angry stare with no words until this researcher sort of like, hmm, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think when he leaves, Anarch sort of like is gritting his teeth. And it's just like, hmm, I should have socked him in the face. It's fine. The turnover here is pretty fast with sentience. I mean, I guess you're turning over right now too. Sentient. I wouldn't call myself full sentient or full turning over. Well, I yeah. would call you full sentient. You know, as well as I do, that I lack a number of things that a normal person would have. I mean, technically speaking, with uh, the very the very legitimate feelings that everyone has towards me, I kind of do too. Then I suppose that makes two of us. And I suppose two of us are better than one. Always, Leo. And soon we'll have the whole crew back together. Everyone is coming back. I'm trying my hardest. I already got Lopez. Lopez is coming back? Yeah. Just as joyous as he was before. It's very sarcastic. Or has not changed, Captain. <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat that? Very well. All right. Um, we can go ahead and choose the next moment if you like. Yeah. Uh, so for the next moment, uh, I think. I kind of feel chaotic today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say agents of chaos intrude at that moment, knocking over the researcher on their way in uh, who had treated 
uh, Leo so poorly um, and knocking him so hard that perhaps he even knocks out. Um, and they come in attempting to steal um, some of the research that, uh, uh, that Leo's been working on along with destroying the lab and its secrets. All right. Um, and I think, again, there's this, there's this sort of, um, there's this sort of tension that builds up in Anarch. And I think the thing that is very different that Leo um, will clock on this is that Anarch rarely tried to be a direct part of the fighting back when we were all together. Uh, he was much more a stand back, shoot from the back, be very stealthy. But um, he balls up his fist. There's something very, like something almost trying to get out of him. And um, Anarch sort of like looks back at Leo and he's like, can I fight them? I believe our only option is to engage and that charming smile almost has something very like haunted with it. Like it looks almost wicked as he turns back. He also puts up his fists and he just sort of runs into the fray. Leo follows uh, suit as in going the direct opposite way so that they kind of like go outwards with cameras in the middle and they're like <laughs> out that way um and the thing about leo is that leo's an android so like they have like robot parts and are heavier i would say than their body type and build would give off so punching for leo is pretty easy because leo's punches weigh like 20 pounds each um so that's entirely like their method of fighting because that's you know, they're, they're a surprising uh, brawler, I would say. And so um, Anarch and Leo are like no strangers, I think, to fights. And we would see that like, even though Leo has been so resistant and so hesitant and doesn't want to go back to uh, something that obviously has broken them and broken their belief. Um, it's like, you know, riding a bike, fighting next to the captain again. Uh, there's they're perfectly in sync I love that <laughs> yeah you. and I think again Leo um, the captain only really fought hand like hand to hand in the past when things have gone terribly wrong <laughs> uh, but right now like there is this similar there's almost like this similar sort of weight uh, as he sort of like hauls back and uh fights through <laughs> these agents of chaos before we uh, escape the lab. Um, and I think as soon as we're outside, Anarch is just full belly laughing, like covering his face and just sort of like, oh my goodness, I needed that. <laughs> yeah, Leo kind of like pulls up their fists and like looks at them and like dusts them off a little bit, you know. Um, it says like, it's been some time since I have last engaged an enemy uh, in that way, but thankfully I have already downloaded the research that was inside of that lab. All right. They're, they're quiet for a moment though, because there are a lot of plants in there and regrowing them is going to be a big hassle someday, but that they decide is a problem for tomorrow, Leo. And mm -hmm. And I think the captain holds out his hand. And uh, Leo, how do I give you fragile hope? I think as Leo takes the captain's hand, they think that that fragile hope comes from the captain's undying belief in them. Because the captain can be a pretty dishonest person. Um, the captain can be a big liar but the one thing Leo somehow can feel is true is that belief. I love that. And of course, there's your ending the visit. 
Yeah. Um, so I think, oh, let me scroll back up. Um, what makes you doubt me? Um, I think that despite everything and my belief in Leo, I, well, I, I, th um, I think Anarch's big thing is I need Leo by my side because I don't want the enemy to catch Leo alone. But Anarch doubts that this is going to be a place where Leo is happy. And so his concern is that Leo is going to try and find a way to leave and hide away from the captain. So he doubts Leo's resolve. And that's cards now, baby. Oh, boy. <laughs> For Leo, I have drawn a red card. What is this? <laughs> okay, is this deck stacked? Like, Honestly, hold on. Come on. Would you like me to reshovel? No, no it's fine. No. I'm not, I didn't sign up for a non ink CRP. Let's do this. Okay. Uh, so the enemy grows stronger. A brief glimpse of the enemy. Okay. Um, but as, as Leo and Anarch like take each other's hands, something like like this electric current like hits Leo somewhere in the back of their neck, like near where that that tube was. And like, even though they don't necessarily like pause or anything, um, somehow they're able to conjure like the image of, uh, of uh, uh, Corden um, and uh, in Corden's face, they like conjure the image of the enemy androids themselves. And it's this like horrific image of like what Leo looks under the synthetic skin with these glowing red eyes and these like teeth aligned with this rusted, like not even like well-oiled metal. It just looks like a, a skeleton, like with, with tubed parts that uh, move its joints. And it kind of opens its mouth, moves forward at Leo and then that's the vision. Is that good? Terrifying. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for Anarch, another red card. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> well, um, so I think, uh, I'm just going to continue down my little line of creating this like false enemy or like this, this enemy that is coming back. I think this time um, we barely escape a weapon, like being thrown through the air and sort of sinking like a plasma weapon sinking into the wall next to us. And it is a very distinct plasma weapon. It's like a trident um, from an, from an old enemy and uh, Anarch looks at it and is just sort of shaken up before grabbing, like grabbing Leo's hand tighter. And is like, we gotta fucking go. Nice. Yeah. Well, they go. <laughs> wow, we're truly gaming here, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Everything will be okay. <laughs> Hoggers. <laughs> Uh, ah, Mary, technically, there should only be 52 Fuckers. red cards in the two decks. Mm -hmm. Oh, someone was making a joke that all the cards are red cards. So 52 oh. plus 52. Gotcha. Okay. I was just worried. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mary secretly stacked at all red cards. <laughs> now, now that's content. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So after this chase, you know, uh, we find ourselves in a different place, in a different scene. And Hapna, can you please introduce your character? Yes, I can. Oh, actually, sorry. 
Uh, it's seven o'clock. So why don't we take a five minute break? Okay, everybody. Sorry to tease you guys. Next is how Hamna. Could you do this to me? Everybody, please <laughs> stretch, take a you break. Want? Pet your pets and we'll be back soon. Bye. And we're back. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Um, felt so bad for teasing you. I know uh, Hamna's one of my favorite people in the space right now. With the, like, Oh, yeah. I'm going to compliment <laughs> all of you throughout this. And you can't stop me because I'm a facilitator. What <laughs> up? <laughs> so, Hamna, go ahead. Please introduce your character for us. I'm taking facilitator powers away from you. <laughs> that just means you got to be nice to me, which uh, that's win, fine. Win. That I can do. <laughs> okay. To set the scene, I think we pan away from this uh, place, this laboratory that Leo and Anark were on, and we sort of zoom out into space and zoom in again on a different planet somewhere else. And we zoom in on this icy terrain. It's nighttime. It's dark, there are stars out in the sky, and we zoom into what looks like a mountain of some sort. And in the mountain, we see a small cave sort of nestled inside. And when we go into the cave, we see a person with dusty brown skin, short, thick, light brown hair that just always seems to stick up no matter what they do. And as we look at them, they're wearing these sort of baggy, like monochrome brown and black clothes. They have a wiry figure. And the most striking thing about them really from their side profile is that he has on his left arm a s entire like tattoo sleeve that glitters and seems to shift in colors every time you blink. At first you see it and it seems white and then it shifts to black and pink and blue and green and purple and it just keeps moving and shifting. And the tattoo itself is of eyes and wings and eyes and wings sort of coalescing into one another. And it doesn't quite seem to make sense what exactly it is. You just know that it gives off a sort of eerie uh, aura to it. And right now they are crouched down on the ground of this ice cave and all around them. You think that for a second that you're still outside? But you realize, no, no, there's a ceiling, there's ground, but for some reason there are stars everywhere. And you can see Liana crouched down on the ground, adding more stars to the ground. But when you look closer, they're not actually stars at all, but eyes blinking every now and then. When you think a star is glittering, it's actually just an eye blinking here, along the ceiling, along the walls, along the floor. And they are currently in the midst of a ritual when you walk in anark um i think what's the first thing that strikes anark about this ritual is the eyes um when he realizes what it is but there's also seems to be like this faint uh, like not song not words but almost like a chant that seems to be like permeating through but coming from who? From nowhere? From everywhere? It sort of inst like instills a little bit of fear in Anarch, but there's also an amount of awe. And as he steps forward, he um, clears his throat. <clears> throat. Hello there, old friend. The figure doesn't respond at first, just rises slowly. And when Liana turns to face you, you can see on their right cheek, this scar that like slashes across their entire right cheek. It is sort of like a black as if some sort of uh, ooze or ink had been splashed across their face, almost in the shape of flowing water. But there's a slight purple pink tinge to it as if it had been bruised recently and this you recall was your parting gift to liana from our last mission and as they turn to look at you their dark green eyes with this piercing gaze that sparkles you're not quite sure whether it sparkles on its own or whether it's because of all of these stars these eyes that are inside of this cave but they sparkle 
as they look at you, and a smile comes across Liana's face. Captain, it's been quite some time, hasn't it? Too... too long. I, uh... I hope I'm not disturbing this, disrupting. You're you are, here. actually. Ah. I can wait outside. No, that's okay. And as you enter, Liana sort of like continues to sort of like move their arms in these like slow, fluid motions. And every time with a flick of the wrist, with a movement of their elbow, the stars, the eyes shift, new ones appear, old ones disappear, flicker out. You're not quite sure what's happening, but every time they move, the atmosphere sort of shifts around you. Mm. You, you said at first it looked like stars. Um, I think Anarch is going to hold on to that. Does any Do any of these like arrangements look familiar? I think you see that as they're shifting, they kind of go in and out of different constellations, but one constellation remains static. No matter what, no matter how everything moves, there's one constellation that stays the same. And I think it's a constellation that is ever-present uh, in the night sky, within space, from the planet where our crew had first met for the first time. Ah. <laughs> um, Anarch has no tact. Uh, home, huh? Home. It's a funny word, isn't it? I mean... Is home a place? Is it a people? Is it a feeling? I thought I knew once, but... And their eyes lock on yours. Now I'm not so sure. Good to know the both of us are kind of lost. I don't know about lost, I just know that there is more darkness left in me than last we were together. And I think you are to blame for that. And as they say that, you can sort of see the scar on their cheek starting to pulsate a little bit. If it matters. And it, apologies are usually for the person apologizing more than. I'm sorry about the way things ended. I know. You're always sorry, Anarch. No matter what you do, you always have something to apologize for, don't you? I don't apologize for bringing the crew together. Do you apologize for tearing us apart then? Yeah. And it even further than an apology. See, I was listening to you. I'm taking actions to correct it and to correct another mistake I made. The, they're back. I thought we had put them away for good. I, back. I don't know yet. I know that they've been appearing. There's even enemies that we thought we had taken care of that are still around. 
Liana's hands flick down, and as they do so, each one of these stars, these eyes, like, opens. So what are these actions that you're doing to make up for everything that you did? Well, I thought that since we are the ones who have the most knowledge about how to fight these people, since we didn't do it, since, since I failed us last time, I thought that I could bring crew back together. Leona takes this information in and walks towards Anarch. And as they do so, when the two are just within arm's distance of each other, Leona raises uh, one of their hands and places it on Anarch's cheek and sort of considers you for a moment, as if they're searching for something. Mm -hmm. Do you still have light within your soul? Um, I think uh, what Liana finds when they look up into this face, or I don't know how to tell Liana is look straight on, look down, I don't know. Anarch's tall um, as fuck, though. <laughs> I think Liana's kind of, like, average height, so you're probably looking down. Okay. Yeah, like, there's... The scar on his face is new. He was pretty vain when he was younger. So it's not covered up. It's not... And, and like, the there's stubble, and it's unkempt, and it's it's just very much, like, his hair is a mess, it's very much not like him. But um, that smile of his, it seems to hide everything behind it. It curls up and he just looks down and he's like, you always seem to bring out light in me. I think there's light left. And Liana's hands still on your cheek. Let's hope this time you won't take the light out of any one of our crew members in order to keep yours lit. Yana, believe me. I... <laughs> I'd rather go dark first now. Then you still haven't learned a thing. Damn, I really thought that would be the right answer. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. I think Liana chuckles a little bit at that, uh, taking their hand away. All right. Well, um, what is... Uh, what is this ritual? Is, uh, do we need to do we need to do something? Do we need to give up something? Liana takes your hand in his and walks you to the middle of this cave. So you are in the center of it, and it's uncomfortable because all of these eyes are staring down at you. And Liana, with your hand, sort of like pulls you down to sit cross-legged with them on the ground and you can feel the cold of the ice on your legs the ritual demands a sacrifice of some kind and as much as i think that the entire crew has sacrificed too much for you already you are still our captain and if it's back you will need all of us. And so they take your other hand in theirs and they squeeze tight. And as they do, you can see the tattoo sleeve on their arms start to move, start to shift. And the wings sort of like move down their arm, like across their forearm and then kind of 
onto your arm as well, across the hands as you're holding his. And they sort of, the tattoo connects you both in this moment. And you can feel, you're not quite sure how you know this, but you just know this. You can feel some of Liana's own life force, light, energy, essence, sort of flow into you as this is happening. Um, I think, uh, there's like a, there's like a shock in Anarch for a moment. And there's this sort of like fear that sort of breaks onto like a very haunted look. There's no lie here. There's no secret. And all that Anarch is putting forward right now falls away. And all you see is this haunted, stubborn asshole who has trekked his ass up a fucking mountain to bother you. And um, I think he um, raises like the hand that isn't doesn't have like the tattoo like joining the both of you and he bites off the glove that he's been wearing and his hand is covered in like little scars of like his own parting gift to himself um, and he's just like, what do I offer? What do you think you owe the crew? A better captain. Protection, support. I don't know how to give these things in a ritual. You make a vow, bound between us both, right here, right now, and you swear not to break it. And um, Anarch is looking and just sort of like, he takes like a shuddering breath and he's like, I vow to protect and support my family. My crew it's it's not gonna be like it was before and i in turn will vow to stand by you throughout this mission only if you deserve it And as these words are said between the two of them, I think the stars start to flicker out one by one by one. It's a slow process at first. And then entire constellations disappear until that one constellation, the one of home, remains towering above them. And you know that the ritual is complete. Nice. I think when the ritual ends and we're alone, Anarch has not let go of Liana's hand. And I think in the silence after such big words, such, such oaths to swear, there's a tension growing between us. And I think, you know, he can't help but be looking and trying to decide what he needs to say. Liana can see uh, Anarch's own hesitation and they uh, squeeze Anarch's hand. And as the ritual is ending, the tattoo starts to sort of fade away from Anarch's body and back up onto its rightful place in Liana's arm, and it continues to shift and pulsate with light 
as the two of them, I think, share a quiet moment looking at each other with a vow made between the two of them, magically sealed, should it ever break. I really love that. So tell me, with these vows magically sealed, what will make you break your vows? Liana would be willing to break these vows if Anarch, even if Anarch goes back into his old ways, into causing rifts between the crew, into not being there for us the way that they were not there for us the last time, even if they slide back into that behavior, even if they don't deserve Liana to stand by them. I think Liana would if Anor can show that there is still a possibility, an inkling, just a little tiny glimmer of hope that he could change, theoretically, maybe one day. If Liana just tried hard enough. Maybe. <laughs> and I ask you, Captain, why will you never be as faithful as I? Um, because in the end, uh, my heart is drawn in so many different, like drawn in so many different directions that there's just a sort of like sense that like, how could I be ultimately faithful to one or even like a couple, a few things when there are so many things demanding my attention and care. I feel like that's what got us here in the first place. Well, then I better fucking learn. <laughs> All right. Cod keeper. The cards for Liana. We have a black card. Oh, thank God. We did oh, it. Oh, thank God. We did it, Reddit. We did it. Ah! Ah! Okay, screaming. So, a black card. Loyalty is regained. I get to keep the card uh, and describe why I want to believe in the other. Or alternatively, I can give it away. And I think right now, uh, in this moment, I will give the card to Anarch. Because I think Liana doesn't necessarily believe in the mission. That's not why, really, they're here right now. It's Anarch. And Anarch's Bad choices, but good reasons. <laughs> and Anarch's card is also black. We did it, Reddit! Let's <laughs> go, finally! We have broken the curse! Let's put some poggers in the chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I think I also have to do what you did, like the cat. Like Can't no, Uno Anarch. reverse me. <laughs> I do, I do. Uno reverse you. Where An Anarch, this card, like I, I feel like I have to give it to you because Anarch is so. Um, in this in this moment, like Liana has seen the sort of like haunted man who wants to atone um but is also <laughs> there's still so much of him that is the same and so he is so because liana is coming along um as much as everyone else is joining them uh he wants to believe that he's worthy for liana to stand at the side for now I'm going to be praying for your downfall. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Please bring that energy. It's so fun. <laughs> All right. 
and yeah i think it's i think that's it's sort of like peters out as them walking down an icy mountain maybe as the snow starts to fall it's just dangerous it's very dangerous <laughs> <laughs> and um i think that brings us to uh our dear patient jay justice hello jay hi <laughs> please why don't you tell us about your character well melita is a mix of loving every single bit of fun technology she can get her hands on, but also firmly entrenched in tradition and kind of mixing the, the culture and the science, just finding a way to feel like she's still in touch with where she comes from, but also constantly on the cutting edge of what can make our lives a little bit easier, a little less stressful, considering that we have this enemy that has outpaced us in so many ways in terms of what they can do. And it's mildly terrifying to think about, but somehow we managed to like outsmart them and come out alive. And so she spends like every day since then, not taking anything for granted, being grateful for what she has and just trying to build the strong relationships because you're only as strong as the others in your network. And if you don't keep the signal going, you lose touch and you fall apart. Yeah. I wouldn't know anything about falling apart. No, <laughs> no, no, we don't know anything about that. We're fine. <laughs> that's that's other people. We know better. like press X to doubt. <laughs> press X to doubt. <laughs> <laughs> always stay hating that way. You always got drive. Oh no, <laughs> poor Lopez. <laughs> exactly. As long as you have drive, you'll never stop. <laughs> I think Lopez exists like out of pure spite at this point. Exactly. I That's love what it. keeps them breathing. It's a <laughs> limitless supply too. It's self-renewing. That's it's... what powers the suit is just oh. hate. <laughs> I love my crew. I miss my crew. I love them. But yeah. So right now we're we're in the homestead, you know, we're in the home base. The home that kept the captain safe all these years. <laughs> where we kept it together. Just the two of us. Huh. And oh. so it's kind of like, yes, everything is soulless steel and mixes of different metals, but it's also covered in well-loved tapestries and blankets that tell a story and things that harken back to a time that maybe we don't even have any written memory of, but we have the stories that our grandfathers told us, like that kind of stuff. So it's like a nice mix of different earth tones and then also extremely cutting edge technology. So it's cool, but it's soft. I love that, yeah. And Anarch has his little touches of like, uh, despite everything, there are so many photos. Like things that he has uh, pulled and researched. Some of these look like grainy security cam stuff that he has like scrabbled together of the crew of like of, of things that like hey maybe i should erase this that this shouldn't exist but also i'm just gonna keep this uh liana and leo are laughing in this picture my children <laughs> and it's like if we shouldn't have this if the enemy is already in our house we're, we're doomed anyway so you might as well keep your security pictures that would get us arrested like whatever <laughs> it's fine it's fine it's fine, it's totally fine. <laughs> um but yeah, I think um, I think I come in uh, looking uh, looking a little bit uh, haggard. Um, so it's a day ending and why? Yeah. <laughs> um, but I don't. Well, like I, I don't look messy. I don't look like I have gone out and gone for a fight or something. Um, and instead, I just look, I look a little nervous. Uh, what uh, what mundane type of thing does Meletta get up to? Um, and so what you, to you walk in, and yeah. I'm over here using my life science detector to see if we have any like rodents or pests in the walls <laughs> because I know that we have a frequency that's supposed to deter them. But I swear to God, these things are learning. They're 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 getting smarter and they're figuring out how to pass bypass my systems. I hate bugs. 
I hate anything that creeps and crawls. And I feel like, when are they going to invent better bug repellent? Because I'm over here trying to like hotwire this thing so it actually keeps them out. Because I'm telling you, they figured out a way. They've made themselves armor. I think that last Roach had a helmet on. Like, what? how did they get in here? Um, and I think Anarch uh, gets up close and sort of um, almost tries to sneak up on Lutta. And he just says, uh, you know, we could try the candle thing again. Yeah. Oh God. I, I listen. I, I'm not gonna be out here trying to put out fires and be chased by bugs at the same time. We gotta pick a struggle. We can't do this. I mean, this place is mostly metal. It probably, it probably won't go up. Right. Too just, fast. just the flammable antique items brought back from the motherland ten thousand years ago. Sure. Let's just. Burn uh, yeah, too, okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um. How was your day? You look a little, uh, a little tired there. I've been uh, just doing that project that uh-huh. I've been talking about. How's that going? Well, I kind of, kind of wanted to um, sort of bring you into fold on it. Need help for it? I knew this was going to happen eventually. All right, I figured I'll just let you have your space until you run into a wall and you need direction. So, what's going on? I am, uh, and again, like. Uh, a different side than we've seen. We've seen like sincere, sad, cocky, and this is just sort of like a little bit anxious. A little bit like a. Hmm. You're uh, home. You can drop the wall now. You don't have to pretend to be like on top of everything because I I know you. I've seen you. You're not on top of anything. What's going on? <laughs> I, I do stuff. I I'm, I'm a I do things. I do important things. Even yes, I, unplanned things. Poorly thought out things. Yep. All right. All right. I, I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize for being who you are. I accept you the way you are. I just want to help you so that you know what direction you're going in. We're better as a team. You know this. Yeah. And I think we work even better when we're a family. We're always a family. Wait, what do you mean? There's something that I I was trying to ignore it because we've paid our dues. We saved the whole fucking galaxy. And what yeah, we I know got, I was there. Yeah, and we, what we got for it was a broken family. And um, so I tried to ignore it. And I kept seeing the signs. Yeah. And then a whole colony went dark. What up? Why didn't you tell me? I, I didn't want to get dragged into it again. Not, this is not the kind of thing you get dragged into. It comes to you whether you want it or not. Exactly. And so when it finally hit me that I couldn't run away from it, that we couldn't just stay here, I... I've been contacting our old crew. You mean the old crew that told you to fuck off and they never want to talk to you again? The, that old crew? Uh, do you remember like a couple of weeks ago when I came back from that business trip and I had like nearly broken ribs? Uh-huh. So you didn't fall down the stairs and through a window? It was Lopez. Oh, of course it was Lopez. You know, I, I, don't, I don't blame Lopez, honestly. There are some times when I just... And, <sighs> If we can't run away from it, I don't want, if it's just the two of us, it'll be even harder. So I went to ask everyone if they'd come back. What did they say? They said yes. I'm honestly impressed because I did not think you'd be able to even convince any of them. I... But I'm still mad because why didn't you come to me? I mean, I maybe I wouldn't be able to keep Lopez from punching you, but I feel like I might have helped make the punch a little less severe. 
I, well, you know that before I was very reckless and gung-ho, and I still am. I'm not going to say that I'm not. I'm trying to be different. That's, that's, that's growth. That's amazing. How's that going? Liana didn't punch me. Liana's a saint. <laughs> yeah, but I, I would have deserved it. Yeah. So we're really, we're really doing this. I mean, yeah. I, 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 know, I just need you. I feel though. like you say you're going to change, but then you don't tell me when you're doing things. So I'm still sitting here in the dark, getting this dropped on me out of nowhere when you've already made all these decisions by yourself. So how have you changed? Or do you just change for everyone else and not for me? Uh, um, yeah, no, I fucked up again. So, um, you're my right hand. I Am I though? You don't even talk to me anymore. I swear. We're, we're as close as we've ever been, but we feel so far apart sometimes. You sit here and you worry and you stress and you tell me everything is fine. And then you go out and you nearly get yourself beaten to death. And honestly, you would have deserved it. But what? I just don't understand. What do you really want? Because if you want us to be a family, if you want us to be stronger together, then why do you keep pushing me away? Even though you say we need each other and you say that we have to do this, but I'm not, I'm not feeling anything behind those words. I don't understand you. I, I uh, you've wasted so much of your life sitting here with me where I have been throwing a big fucking tantrum about thinking I was right when everything blew up. And now I've realized I'm wrong and I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed that you have spent this much time with a loser. First of all, you don't get to tell me whether or not I've wasted my time. Are you telling me that you can never change, that you can never be the person that I know you can be? No. How is it a waste if we've at least been trying to live up to the best of ourselves? Because at the, at the height of everything, I swear we were unstoppable. We did something amazing together and you act like you're not the same person. Like, wh what happened to you? Like, why don't you talk to me about what really is going on? Um, I don't think Anar has a verbal answer. He, he looks lost. He looks frustrated. And he doesn't know what to say. But, like, he reaches out. He has, of course, they're in the house. So he reaches out, gloves off to try and like touch Maletta's hands, hold them in his, to try and reach some physical sense of understanding because he can't figure out the words. He doesn't know what else to say. Are you having an anxiety attack right now? Are you okay? A little bit, but that's not really, you're upset. And I don't really want to focus on me right now. Yeah, I know. That's the usual cycle. You lie, I get upset. And then you get upset and I spend the rest of the evening comforting you because you are our captain and we need you to get yourself together to be the best that you can be so we can function as a team. Because when you're on, you are on. And when you are off, you are off. And you're not a machine. You're a person and you're allowed to have moments of weakness. You're allowed to have epochs of weakness if you have to. I want to give you that space to do that. 
I want to give you room to grow and to be yourself, but I keep giving you this space and it feels like I'm giving you a planet and, and you're just, you're kicking me off of it. It feels like you're not even trying to communicate with me at all. And I know it's hard for you, but you have to try because you cannot ask me to get back on that ship with you and lead our family if I don't even know who I'm leading them with. I can't be your second in command if I can't trust you. And if I can't trust you, who can? You're right. And I'm sorry that it's been this way. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to change, I promise. And that's why I, that's, I'm sorry it took this long. I'm sorry that I didn't tell you about this. I, if they didn't want to come, I didn't want to uproot our lives. It's not that's, about them. This is about you. I, that's what I'm not sorry. I'm not trying to blame it on them. I'm trying to let you know that yes, I was being a coward. Yes, I I was a coward. You're I was and being... you're sorry. You keep forgetting something. It's not about what you say to me. It's about your actions. And it is not too late. It's never too late for you to stop waffling and just do what I've been asking you to do this entire time. And talk to me about what's going on so we can plan this together. Okay. You want me I'm... to be in? Bring me in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can do that. All right. What are we doing? We're getting the crew back together. We're going to hunt down Legume and we're going to take him out. What are our leads? The... All right. So there is the um, colony that went dark. It only happened a month ago. A month so, is a long time when it comes to this. Yeah, but I, I have it from sources that he's having a lot of trouble developing these things. So we don't know when he's going to strike again, but we know where he has struck. We have evidence of what has been done there. Maybe we can follow and the And we gave him a way. month of lead time because you didn't tell the smartest person you know what was going on. So you're going to internalize that and never do this to me again. Yes, ma'am. That's what I thought. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, I really love that you can hand me my ass without breaking my ribs. It would not be safe for you to live with Lopez. I mean, we're about to live with him on a ship. That was your choice. You walked into that with your eyes open and your ribs exposed. Good luck. Pat's on the back. <laughs> I, you know, he's like a brother to me. Yeah. Brothers, they're very close to you. So close. Like knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> I think um, as this sort of conversation sort of like peters out, I think uh, the captain and anarchist asked Lana to like sit with them and just sort of like engage in this like small closeness. And I think he looks her right in the face and asks, I need to know for all the ways I fuck up, what's the thing that will make you not come back? What will cost me your loyalty? If I look you in the eye and I ask you a question and you don't answer me honestly and it's pivotal and our lives hang in the balance and you still can't be 100% truthful with me, I'm gone. Thank you. Why am I 
not enough for you. Well, I... You're much more than I deserve. But I am. There's a lot that I have to atone for. And I love you. But I, it's hard to feel like I deserve to do that when I failed you and everyone I care about for my entire life. I'm sorry. Sorry, I looked at the Zoom chat. What? Why can you never just answer a question directly? I I thought I did. I really, I really thought I did this time. I ask you why I'm not enough for you, and you go on about yourself. Because if I told you, if, because your question implies, you're telling me that there's a true answer to that. I told you, you are enough. But you just don't think you deserve to be happy because you're not worthy of happiness. All right, when you say it like that, it sounds really bad. Listen, you aspire to things that you probably aren't worthy of every day. Keep that trend going. Okay. Okay. <laughs> How long do you need to um, get ready to go? Get ready to go where? Crews all together. Uh -huh, Ships ready. You know me. I can be ready at the drop of a hat because you never know when the next bomb is going to drop and you have to be ready to move like now. Well, I have been this evening's bomb. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, she I turns around dinner. and start rolling up the tapestries. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make dinner and anarch uh, retreats. <laughs> Woof. Everybody good? O-card, O-check-in? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I'm just saying, Letta should have walked out. We all did. Mm -hmm. Leave the only ass. reason she didn't is like he's gonna get everybody in the whole galaxy killed. I gotta go make sure no one dies. Let's go. <laughs> that's crazy. I want you to know every time you dropped a bomb, I was like, that's crazy. I cannot believe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oof. Drag his ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know Lopez was in there going, kick him again, girl. Get him for me. <laughs> you destroy him like emotionally. I'll up. destroy him physically. Emotional Lopez was just like, what's trying to instigate, just being like, I wouldn't let that level of disrespect if that was me. Like, I love, like, he's talking to you crazy. I wouldn't let that level of disrespect stand. I don't know about you. Now, when we were doing character selection back in the day, planning this show, um, the, you know, the, the character types came up and Victor was like, oh, I'll be captain. And I was like, oh, thank God. Like, <laughs> 
<laughs> Woo, I knew this would be tough. I, if Jay said that any of that to me, I think I'd cry. So that puts us at cards, right? Oh, yeah, yes, yes, we're at cards. That puts us at cards, and then we're going to take a break. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> you have to go cry in the corner now. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're just going to sing it. The minute we go to break, <laughs> poor Victor's crying, shaking, the person throwing up in the corner. Words before. <laughs> I didn't realize how devastating they were to hear. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> so the card I drew from Letta was black. Yay! Let's go! Right. He deserves it. Okay. So I keep the card. Okay. Why do you want to believe in me? <laughs> <laughs> I want to believe in you because you don't believe in yourself and I've seen you do amazing things. I don't understand this disconnect between the life you've clearly lived and the person you are, and then the person you act like the minute we're done. Like we, we saved the galaxy. We did the very best we could and it was enough. You were enough. And yet you act every single day like you're not. And I just don't understand. I'm supporting you. We're all supporting you. We, despite everything we've been through, your crew, we love you. Why can't you believe in yourself as much as we believe in you? I love that. <laughs> and the I don't currently have an answer that isn't just a list of uh, mental health issues. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and Anarch's card is red. Oh, yes. You can't just end on a good note? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what I think uh, makes the enemy stronger is not only do they have outside surveillance, they somehow snuck surveillance in here. And the enemy has now targeted Maletta as a weak link to draw her away from the crew. It's the roach with the helmet. It's the damn bugs! I knew it's it! The oh, it's the oh roach with God. the helmet! It's the roach with the helmet! That helmet was some kind of communication device that works in deep space. Oh. Lord God. Oh my God, I love Rochatui. <laughs> we don't I love Rochatui! I love no. Rochatui. Please! No! The rat wanted to cook? Why can't the roach want to cook? Hey, uh, oh Ar if anyone here is Raccoon an artist, can you draw Rocha Tui and tweet it at me? I'd really appreciate it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my I God. will not be retweeting it. I'm sorry, y'all. I really can't. Can't. No. <laughs> That was a real life J Justice trait right there. I'm not lying. I will, I will not retweet it. the bug fan art. <laughs> <laughs> you can draw You can draw a raccoon with a helmet on. I'll retweet that. <laughs> Rac We're raccoon again. Yeah, we're not with a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we're going to take a short uh, five, ten minute break. Uh, everyone else, audience, you've been watching for two hours, so make sure you also stretch and get water. Yes, we love you. Water. It's good for you. And we are back, everybody. No. Am I, oh, am I supposed to enter this? Yeah. Oh yes, my brain has been so. I'm sorry. I thought. I thought... We're <laughs> looking at Clarence. Let's go. I thought was gonna intro it, which is why I was like, "Oh, sorry." Do it, but I'll type it. Now it's off to the mini games, and now we're gonna go in order. Uh, Cleric, you get to choose our first mini game. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I think we okay. For, so for this mini game, uh, I I would call I don't say what it is until we like we dive into it. So I think. Since we're all back on the ship, uh, the unnamed ship, uh, what? Oh, please stop doing this. Okay, my. Uh, so we're on this unnamed ship right at the moment. I don't know. Have we picked a name? Do you want to pick one right now? Audrey? Let's do one right now. Everyone, come up with a with a vowel or a or a sound, and we just come match them all together. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the mini game is now we're naming the ship. Okay. <laughs> the game is now naming the ship. We just mashed a bunch of vowels. I got we got Joe. La. <laughs> Joe La. <laughs> Joe La. <laughs> Jacosta. I don't know. <laughs> Joe La Kiki. Joe La Kiki. 
Jolakiki. <laughs> the Jolakiki. The, the Jolakiki. The Jolakiki. <laughs> there it is. That's our ship name. I the know the Jolakiki. The game was called uh, Should Suns Rise. It could be something sun based. <laughs> you don't like they, Jolakiki? Yeah, you don't like Jolakiki? What is this? <laughs> Um, Dola Kiki feels like we're about to sing the Turkey Lurkey song, and that like we have committed several like I can't believe microaggressions I because of it. I really don't like Dola Kiki. Okay, no, let's no. go with okay, but sun based. Then we could go with the, the, the solar flare. Helios? Oh, the solar flare sounds dope. No, Helios sounds yeah. awesome. Oh, I like Helios. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, the Helios. Okay. <laughs> So we're on the I mean, <laughs> I think someone flying too close to the sun is probably a theme of this game. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could call it the Icarus instead. But... Oh my god, oh. no. Oh. It's too that's too that's It'll go too crash on the nose. nose. That's too <laughs> on the <laughs> And so, I tried to tried to name the ship the Icarus. And people yeah, were like, and we said, what the fuck? You want us to out. die? Everyone oh, just looked at you and was like, ah, oh, no, thank no, you. No, no. <laughs> so uh I think we, as we get on the ship, I think everyone kind of just like slowly walk. I guess we're all just like sitting up where we slowly get on. And like, uh, we've been like flying for a bit, but everyone's kind of just been awkward with each other. Like no one's really, everyone, it's just been like very loose pleasantries. So I think uh, Lopez is sitting in like the rest area of the, of the ship. And there's like a bunch of couches. There's like a hologram TV. There's like our old, very old, like ancient arcade machines that like we don't even know the names of anymore. It's just like I know why I press these buttons and it works. <laughs> and there's like even sitting in the in the in the restaurant in the like the break room is like an old photo of the crew like pre breakup just sitting there that I think uh, Maleta probably like took care of the most. And I think uh, Lopez is kind of just sitting there adjusting their armor uh, as uh, they're kind of just like staring at both the picture and then the TV as well, just like catching up on all like any news. Uh, so this is how there and the rest of the team are going to blow off steam. So I don't know who wants to come in next. I think uh, Liana uh, was looking for, because this is our old familiar ship, right? But I'm sure that over the years that we've been apart, like Mleta and Anarch probably made some sort of changes to it, maybe like, you know, rearranged like where certain things are. And so Liana was looking for a specific room and accidentally ended up in the break room. I think, and stumbled upon Lopez kind of sitting there. And at first, he was just going to sort of like exit and leave, but kind of hesitates in the doorway for a second. And then like, with, with a great purpose, just kind of like walks through the threshold and goes and sits on the other end of the same couch that Lopez is sitting on. And I think like sits up, uh, like takes their shoes off and then like very L from Death Note style just like mm -hmm. sits on the couch. I can never get used to you like sitting like that. It's bad for your back, you know, and your knees. Well, I mean, so far my back and my knees feel great. So I will continue to sit like this until something else prevents me from being able to do so. What exactly are you doing? I'm making sure my O2 systems are working. It's being in space and making sure my environment system kind of is different from the planet I was on before. So making sure my environment system is now calibrated for a spaceship and uh, it's kind of what I'm needing to do. So uh, it's not you know painful to breathe. <laughs> And I think maybe like during this conversation is when the next person walks into the room. So mm -hmm. I've been trying to not uh, be too hovery because on the one hand, you Melita totally respects everyone wanting to have their space and that they've kind of been like, you know, pulled into this out of obligation, out of, you know, 
duty and out of like, you know, maybe a tiny lingering bit of affection for the captain, not in Lopez's case, but in everyone else's case. Uh, <laughs> but seeing the two of them on the couch together, she kind of can't resist the chance to, to come in there and like have some not, have some time spent with the crew where we're not about to die. <laughs> so she walks in, she awkwardly sits down like Riker, <laughs> trying not to aggravate a back injury. And uh in one of the, the 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 softer chairs across from the couch. So what are you guys doing? What's up? It seems the that well, yes, but it also seems that Lopez's uh suit needs fixing. And I think uh, Liana has been like very, very interested in your suit and has been kind of like trying to like help help quote unquote uh with fixing it and like checking it and stuff even though they probably don't have like the most knowledge about how to actually do so but they're like asking a whole bunch of questions and like it's fine i can i'm just watching the game and putting some uh doing some quick adjustments so it's not anything too bad Oh, yeah, I, I figure it could be too bad because if you were doing anything serious, you'd go to a oxygen filled clean room and not this. We did the best we could clean ish casual hangout spot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's just some quick adjustments. And I'm really just trying to watch uh, football. So. Oh, well, sorry. Don't want to like make too much noise or whatever. Who's playing? I'm sorry. Did you say football? Yeah, football. Football. I don't think I've heard of this sport before. It's a it's a mix of an old arc like old arcane uh, ancient civilization kind of game. Plus, uh, they add jetpacks, ah. and there's like anti gravity, and there's also like a tentacle monster in the mix. I don't know. They call that it blobby. Complicated. I think Liana's eyes kind of like their green eyes kind of go wide and like with interest as you say that there's a tentacle monster in the mix as well. Why did why do tentacle monsters always just get your interest? I've, I've every time I just casually even bring them up. I just think that the average person doesn't have enough of a appreciation for the magical, for the surreal. So it's wonderful to see uh, athletes, I suppose embracing their innate connection to them i think they're trying to avoid people. getting embraced by them yeah with the with the eating that that one guy there he's he just missed it oh oh, oh yeah yeah mm. all right he's not recovering they don't ever oh. they, his family will be getting compensated oh dear uh. and i think that's when leo comes in yeah leo sees us all like staring at this tv <laughs> in like shock and disgust <laughs> Well, That's Leo is actually uh, yeah. carrying a, a tray of food that they themselves cannot eat, but will be offering the rest of the crew. And it may look like a very normal gesture, but it's actually kind of a big gesture for uh, Leo to try and like make immediate peace with everyone, because uh, uh, you know they don't really feel they don't feel like they ever really earn their place in this crew. And so that is why the first thing they did was beeline to the confections and try to arrange a plate that they assume um, humans and sentience would like. Uh, on this plate are cheeses, uh, vegetables, and small tentacles just kind of strewn about um, because, you know, Leo had heard it in conversation. And so naturally Leo thought that was part of the interest. Uh, and so it's seafood and fruit and cheese, which is what humans eat. Right. Are the tentacles cooked? Did they have to be? Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Oh. I was like, is it calamari? Did she deep fry it? Oh, no. <laughs> Leo, I, they, they, they try so hard. Yeah, I like to imagine Leo just dropped it in the middle and just like all three of us are just kind of just looking at it. Just... Thank uh, you. It's like cheese that didn't touch the tentacle. Like their head moves like robotically from one to the other, just waiting to trying to trying to detect some kind of like feeling of of anything, any reading. 
Uh, thanks, uh, Leo. I can't really eat that uh, with the suit on, but I appreciate the thought. I think uh, Leona kind of reaches down and like grabs one of the uh, one of the cheeses, like just a big block of cheese, uh, and starts biting into it. Uh, not not like I'm sure like there's a knife for the for the cheese, and they just don't even they just grab a block and start biting into it. So how do you eat then? I mean, you still need sustenance, I'm sure. I either eat in my room or I need to get like a juice pack. And like stick it through the breathing hole that's in the middle, and I have to suck it through a straw. Would you like me to juice the contents of this tray? No, Leo. I I really I appreciate the thought, but I don't know how well uh, cracker cheese and tentacle will go together. So I'm going to politely say no. Though I I appreciate. The, the thought yeah leo this was super thoughtful um maybe next time we could do it together like an activity we could like prepare it together that would be super fun so we could figure out what uh flavors go best and also where you're getting these ingredients from because i don't remember requisitioning this at all i only searched the kitchen for a small amount of time ah. but i am interested in learning your recipes happy to teach where did the tentacles come from i don't think we want to think about that i really don't <laughs> want to think about that okay you know what that's fair never mind it's not my not my business have the two of you never heard of seafood you know from yes, i hear that I... there's animals in the motherland that have tentacles uh, yes however i did not purchase any for the kitchen before we departed so i was quite surprised to see that on this lovely platter that Leo has made for us. I'm allergic to shellfish. So. Oh, okay. Noted. We will keep those yeah. allergens away from you. Good thing that your suit purifies the air so they cannot cause anaphylaxis right now. Yeah. Yeah. That would be very unfortunate. Yeah, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, and just kind of just like tries to focus back in on the game because it's just like... This is the first human interaction I've had in years. So I think Lopez is kind of just like, great. And in that moment, we were all Lopez. <laughs> Wonderful. So who wants to be the first one to ask an awkward or reveal a personal something? Who wants to be first? Oh, wait. The player whose character is most uncomfortable in the situation. So it's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Uh, I think I bring up an unpleasant memory between uh, you and the captain. And I think I'm going to do that to uh, Maletta. And I'm just going to, and like, Lopez is going to kind of just like uh, look at you and just be like, so still being the captain's errand boy, huh? No, actually, the captain can at least be relied upon to run his own errands. However, everything else that's not just trivial or menial, yes, I have to make sure that actually happens. You're not wrong. Mm. So, uh, you know, I've been wondering just if you will indulge, if you'll indulge me. Every one of us, I can understand, you know, left the captain anarch because anarch is awful. what is a polite hmm? yeah awful shitty uh garbage um leo do you have a descriptor that you want to add into this uh disappointment ah uh, beautiful so a disappointment we all left so i've been it's getting kind of bugging me ever since the captain came and dragged me on this ship. Uh, why did you stay? I stayed because despite the fact that we know the captain best, outside of our little circle, the rest of the universe, the rest of the galaxy thinks that the captain is this amazing, perfect person because we made him look good. We made him indispensable to everyone. And so he's the best way to get information on what could possibly be threatening 
what is at this moment a peaceful galaxy. So if I didn't stay with him, we wouldn't be on this mission right now, making sure that little kids we see at the market and the old people who are just trying to retire have a place to live that's not overrun by murderous synthetic beings. No offense, Leo, I love you, you are a baby. But like, if we didn't stay here as a group, if we did not give our all, who was going to take care of everyone? Who was going to be there for the galaxy? That's that's honestly why I stayed. And I understand if you don't respect me for my choice, but I think we all know that if I didn't, the captain would be in a gutter somewhere and the information that he has access to would be lost and we would not actually be able to stop what I think deep down we all know is coming. Liana looks over at Moleta and as he regards her, the tattoo sleeve on their arm like brightens a little bit for a moment before going back down and they cock their head in confusion. Are you suggesting that you predicted that this legume would be back and that you stayed with Anarch all this time for this exact moment? You couldn't have possibly known that. I wouldn't say predicted because visions of the future are not always perfect or guaranteed and no one in my family has had the true sight for generations. So it's not, I don't think that all of my dreams necessarily are going to happen. And I don't think that every single reading I've ever been able to take on every synthetic creature that I've been able to put into our formulas is adding up to some big revolution. But at the same time, our enemy is so powerful and it wasn't easy, but there were times when I didn't think we were going to be able to win and yet we did. So I just wanna make sure that there was something you know me i'm i'm uber planner i always have to have a backup for the backup for the backup and i knew that if we just let the connections fade there wouldn't be a backup plan and there wouldn't be a way out of it in the future just in case i was wrong so then why didn't you stay in touch with any of us from my understanding you this is the first time you've spoken to any of us. If the connections needed to be kept strong, then where have you been? All At the these same years? time that I believe that, I also respect everyone's autonomy and their agency and their choices. And you all made it very clear that you wanted nothing to do with him. And I knew I couldn't let go of him, but it is your right to be able to do so because the trauma that each one of you went through could have broken anyone and you deserve better. I wasn't going to force you to stay out of my own duty. That's for me. You guys deserve to be happy in whatever way you can find it. And I did not think she was going to be able to get you to come back. I'm so happy that you did. I, I love y'all. I, I really want to be with y'all, but I just, I couldn't make you do that based on a ghost of a vision that may or may not come to pass. So I just, I'm sorry. I wanted to reach out, but I knew that depending on how you felt, depending on how close you were to the you that I last saw, all of you, any word from me might have felt like it was coming from him and you weren't ready to speak to him. And I respect that. Leona reaches out a hand uh, for Mileta and just with a sad look in his eyes says, and don't you deserve happiness? Don't you deserve better too? Thank you. That's so sweet of you to say. Um, I, I I think so, but it haunts me. I I can't I can't let go of the thought that if I shirk my duty, there's no happiness for anyone. So how can my personal happiness be more important than than being responsible than making sure that there's at least one path to victory for us? Maybe we can celebrate again later when we save the galaxy one more time. <laughs> Even I can only sacrifice so much for the captain. Mm. After uh, we save the galaxy this time, you should consider that as well. That's fair. I think uh, Lopez kind of just like regards you and doesn't say anything negative, but doesn't say anything like positive. Kind of just like, mm. 
Uh, and whoever else wants to ask a question, I want to, who wants to go next? I think, um, Liana, while we're sort of sitting in this moment of silence between all of us, sort of taking in this gravity of this prophecy of this responsibility that we all have to um to bear they look over at each and every one of their crew members and they pause and look over at lopez in particular we all came here but I'm admittedly most surprised to see you here, Lopez. I can't help but wonder about why you're here. What motivated you to be here? Your supposed disdain for Anarch, I can't help but wonder. Is that real? Or hiding something else underneath? And here, Liana for mechanically speaking, um, is making assumptions about your romantic interests amongst the group. I think Lopez kind of like, looks Liana just kind of looks around. Uh, and is like, kind of is like twirling something in their hand and kind of just like as soon as you ask that question snaps it and is kind of just very much like I came back for one reason and one reason alone it's because I hate Anarch I hate him with every single fiber of my being. Every day that I breathe is a moment that I'm reminded of how much I hate Anarch. And the only reason I set foot in this ship, if I can be very honest, is because I know he's going to fuck up. And I want to be there to watch him do it. I want to see the look on his eyes when every little set of confidence crumbles. That little confidence we all know he has. We all look into his eyes. All see it. He has that confidence that he holds all the cards. And I'm so begging for the moment it comes slipping out of his wet, dangly little hands. Well, you know what they say, Lopez. There's a fine line between light and dark and a finer line between love and hate. Listen, not all of us can have that symbiosis, brujaria shit that you have going on. All right? So... Maybe I just have hate. Maybe. Maybe not. The magnitude of your feelings seems to be changing your body temperature. Is that normal? When I have a lot of hate building up, I get flustered, Leo. Thank you for reading my body, my temperature without my permission. I, I do appreciate it, your robotic invasion of privacy. Do you need medicine? I'm fine. The suit gives medicine. I am fine. Okay. And I think Liana just kind of grabs like another vegetable off of the off of the charcuterie board that Leo had made for all of us and just kind of stares at Lopez 
taking little bites out of the out of the vegetable. Not convinced. Yeah, I think Lopez is just staring at you back, just like just like just staring daggers back. All right, who wants to break the tension? <laughs> I'd love to ask another awkward question. I think I'm ready for that. Go for it. What do you want to ask? All right. So building on this last question, uh, especially because Leo really is enraptured whenever something super dramatic goes down uh, with the crew, because it it isn't just an interesting thing to them as an entertaining, but it's interesting in the way that like this is unfortunately how Leo has learned about feelings is from being with this crew. And that is why you have a very damaged Android right now. Um, <laughs> look at it, it needs therapy. Um, uh, and so I think Leo's curiosity is building. And so with that, uh, they will also, they're gonna continue putting uh, the focus on Lopez uh, and, and, uh, and say, well, if this is how you feel about the captain, then how do you feel about coming back together uh, with, with us. Uh, and I'm trying to go, honestly, I, I'd love to do this as like a group thing. Like if it's not the captain, if you're, if you're hate for the captain is what brought you back, what made you want to bring, to come back and be around us of all people? Um, Cause I want to ask a, a, you about someone else here, obviously trying to gauge your true feelings about me. Mm -hmm. I think Lopez kind of looks at uh, Leo, like briefly, uh, like tears their eyes away from Liana and looks at Leo. <clears throat> and it is just like, <laughs> is kind of just, I think processing, because I think internally, uh, Lopez still feels very awkward about everything. Like, I'm not the person they remember me as. But it's also kind of just like, I, all, like, a lot of hate, but also, like, a lot of love for everyone else besides the captain, but also doesn't want to say that. So I think Lopez kind of just is like, you being here is really just to be here. I, I don't particularly... I want to see the captain fall. I don't want to see any of you fall. Well, and kind of just side eyes a little bit of uh, Liana and just like, not everyone, you know? So it's fine. Just enjoy the ride of all of us being here. If I may break the order just a little bit, because I think it's a perfect moment. Uh, when, oh, uh, when Lopez side eyes Liana, saying like, you know, wants to see not everybody fall. Uh, I think Liana kind of laughs, catching the eye contact, and they, like in their weird like crouched position, like start to like move a little bit closer. And they purposefully, I think, like fall a little bit onto Lopez. Like that, you mean. Get off, get off. And like literally physically jumps up. And I think like as, as uh, Lopez like jumps up, like Leona like falls uh, further onto the couch and is just like laughing on the couch. Like laying down, looking up at Lopez. Uh, and I think you see Lopez start to like really like not like flush or get freak out, but actually start freaking out to make sure that you didn't like accidentally push something on the suit. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's everything. Are you okay? Don't. Don't. 
just sit down, just don't. It used to be a lot more fun than this, Lopez. Yeah, and I used to not be in a fucking bio life suit, too. So maybe I don't need your fucking weird. I, just don't touch me. All right? All right. And I think Liana just kind of like sits up and like moves back to the other end of the couch where they had originally been sitting and like sits back down again, offering the seat open for Lopez if they so choose to come Oh no, back. no. Lopez is now just like sitting against the wall, just like arms crossed, just like, like kind of, you see like the leg bounce, just like, like I was here first, so I'm not leaving, but also just like. Uh, Lita's so sad because it was like plus five team building and now it's like negative 10 team building like oh yeah. damn it <laughs> and I'm glad that that leads you yeah oh yeah I was so busy worrying about everybody else as usual <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh gosh okay For questions. Well, Leo, I know that, well, I wasn't there, but the captain told me about how you've been spending your time when you weren't with us. And I know I didn't reach out because everybody deserved their space after everything went down. But, and I worried about everyone, but I worried about you the most because I felt like you didn't really have a chance to figure out who you were on your own until after going through so much trauma with us. And I just, I, I, I worried about you a lot and I felt bad that, uh, that I didn't stay in touch because you were out there living your life and finding your way. And I just wanted to ask you like how that was for you. Like what, what did you do? Like if you want, if, if you're okay talking about it with us, I think we'd all like to know a little bit more about what your life was like outside of being in our family. If that's okay. You're muted. Here we go. That is completely fine. Uh, I, and for a moment, like Leo, Leo usually like is able to just like spitball answers and stuff. Their heart computer, it's pretty easy. But for a moment, there's just a bit of silence as they sort of gather like their thoughts and memories of everything that happened and the steps taken from there. Uh, and Leo... Leo continues and says that after we separated, I decided that I needed to find use uh, to not only occupy my time, but put this body uh, to positive um, use. Uh, and I didn't want to waste any time. And so I found the closest surface I could and got in contact with some of our old contacts uh, from our last few missions and I was able to find occupation at a uh, government lab working on uh, biology and uh, the development of uh, certain artificial biomes uh, for the furtherment of nearly extinct species. It was the best decision for me. It is where I'm the most useful uh, according to my employers and it felt like the right choice because plants are, as I have discovered, easier to talk to than most sentients. What do the plants have to say? Nothing. It's so nice. <laughs> well, you said it's where your employers say that you fit best. Where do you think you fit best? I think I fit best where my use calls to, or what, where the situation calls to my skills the best. And that is most of the reason why I am here. The other reason is because the lab I was working with, working in blew up. And so I need to find a new one eventually. Oh, goodness. I hope everyone is all right. 
I'm not sure that everyone is all right, but the captain was involved. And so that oh, is dear. usually how things <sighs> are. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Everyone exchanges looks of well. Leona looks over at Lopez. What? I didn't say anything. Listen, Leo, that's I, I, just to like get off away from Leona, look at us, it's like, cool. Like that's, do you, did you actually make that decision to leave? Or did you, the captain also, you know, uh, yeah. find your place, the right place according to your, you that's, find just a chip. That's what I was employer. getting at, yeah. Oh, uh, Leo will assert that it's the, it was their decision. But at the end, it kind of, I don't know. They'll assert at first, it was my decision. And then for a moment, they'll pause and then say, and no one was left. So I had no more use here. So you're just feeling a void of use. And the captain has now found a, a, a use for you. It's what I was created for. Well, okay. Sometimes uh, organic beings tend to have two different modes of motivation. It's where we find ourselves to be useful and what makes us happy. And they're not always the same thing. So I think what we're trying to find out for you, Leo, is in your sense of like motivation, are your source of happiness and source of usefulness the same or are they different? And because your mind is so unique, like we, we don't know. So it, this is kind of like our way of helping you figure out yourself a little bit more, if that's okay. No, I just kind of want to know if the captain reprogrammed Leo. And is kind of just being, you know. I don't think the captain is smart enough to do that. So don't I don't think, think the captain's, captain's ever captain reprogrammed anything. He can I could reprogram a VCR from like the ancient times. Yeah. No. The captain uh, uh, last, the last time the captain worked on the ship, our uh, toilets only flushed upward and not downward. No. So <laughs> yeah. Let's not let's not uh, give him too much credit when it comes to the complexity of my being. I'm really glad that I didn't have to clean that up. Yeah, I did. As far as my happiness goes, I have only felt happiness at different and scarce times in my uh, short life, let's call it that. And one of those moments was long before everything ended when I was with you all. And so that was part of the reason why I returned. Well, I have to get some drinks so we can toast to all of us finding our happy moments. What, what drinks am I getting, you guys? Pass. Okay, fair. Liana? Uh, I will have your uh, most new drink. I don't oh. want anything that you've had on this ship for months. Oh, yeah. Point. You know what? That's fair. Anything that's from a, the last time we were on here is getting tossed. So you got it. Um, and I don't Wait, know. Wait, you still have drinks from years ago? I thought I got rid of everything, but now I'm paranoid that you said this. So I'm going to go check. <laughs> well, you know what? We don't need necessarily need drinks to toast, but I definitely want us all to work towards finding our happiness and... I know it's hard to find when we're also terrified that we're going to face the enemy that nearly killed everyone. But I think that together we can do this. Yeah, way to really bring up the mood there. I tried. <laughs> That's my curse. I'm a little too realistic sometimes. Some people here could uh, learn by example. And some people could learn how to keep their mouth shut. <laughs> oh, I don't think anybody on the ship is good at that. I think uh, I'm going to go check on the guns and I think Lopez moves to leave. <laughs> Fair enough. There's a million duties I should have been doing, but obviously time with you guys is the most important one of them. So I'll see you all later. Head out. I think Liana stays uh, finishing the rest of the charcuterie board. Probably not the tentacles though, if they're not cooked. Uh, <laughs> and he just kind of like is looking at the TV and like very, very, interestedly watching football 
And as, as like, root, like, watching it wrong, by the way, like, rooting mm. for the Eldritch Tentacle Monster to win, uh, even though it's not technically a team in the game at all, it's just kind of like a hazard for the other players to, uh, to play around, I think uh, Leona watches and roots for the monster. Uh, Leo takes their leave and heads to the um, engine room of the ship, where they sort of start to work and then uh, have they have this extendable like like iPhone cable basically that they plug into the wall and then uh, plug into the back of their neck to just kind of relax and recharge in the most literal way. <laughs> All right, I guess that ends the mini game. So we got to go to cards. Who wants their card first? Let's do Cleric, uh, since, or let's do Lopez, since it was their mini game. Okay. If I pull a red card, if a red card gets pulled, I'm screaming. It's a red no, card. No. It's what? Warning. It's a red Warning. card. Ah! Yeah! Oh no! Warning to our audience. Oh dear. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so, um... <laughs> uh, the enemy grows stronger, play disguise of belief grimps. Uh, I think the enemy... Again, I guess uh, Helmet Rakatui is just somewhere on the ship watching and sees uh, the anger in just Lopez and like marks it down and just says uh, uh, easily to like getting just more data information and it's being sent to like that uh, badass like hunting machine that's being like that we uh, that's hunting us down with the harpoon. I'm going to call him Space Percy Jackson. Spursy Jackson. Spursy, I was literally just about to say that. <laughs> Spursy Jackson and his Spursy and, Jackson. and the tail of the plasma trident. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's oh next? yeah, this is Spursy Jackson. I'll go next. Give me a cod, any cod. Black. Huh? I'm on a good streak. Damn. Look at that. Um, because I'm like this. I'm gonna give my card away, and I am going to give it to Mleta. Ooh. I Alrighty. think out of everybody, um, Letta has shown just the most um, stead haha, steadfastness, um, but just like the most resolve, the most, I think it's clear that Letta is the one who knows what's going on better than anyone else here. And if, if Liana can't trust the captain, he knows that he can at least trust Letta. All right, two more. Who's next? All right, let's go. <laughs> All right. What a red. Oh, no. <laughs> Ironically, the brief glimpse of the enemy that Meleta gets is that nightmare she keeps having <laughs> about how their technology becomes more and more insidious and uh, we need to figure out some kind of way to counteract them before it's too late. And everything we'd been researching previously based on the technology we encountered before may not be as up to date as we would like because the enemy is moving in a way that we don't fully understand. And the only context that she's getting is that the time, every time you look at your watch, it's wrong. And the watch turns red and that's all she gets. And she's like, what does it mean? What does it mean? She doesn't know. And last but not least for Leo, also red. Fuck like you, Hamna. Yeah, God. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> So y'all should, should pray to the eldritch monsters more <laughs> clearly it works you're gonna have to this is what leo gets for serving the eldritch monsters instead of praying to them really mm -hmm. um uh so the glimpse that leo gets is actually a message uh that is transmitted into their brain from the doctor himself and it's the doctor's trying to break through Leo's defenses. And so all they can hear right now is their name in the doctor's voice. 
Hoggers. Locate Leo. What an ominous end to our game tonight. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Poggers. Is our time up? Or yeah. is it not? Our time is up. It is 9.05. Oh, no. We're actually five minutes over time. Oopsie. So I Just oh, in time hello, for a raid. Raiders. <laughs> We're so sorry. Oh. We're so sorry. <laughs> we got to go for another hour now. You don't know. <laughs> My wife will murder me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, Raiders, you are in time for us to say our goodbyes. Um, so uh, next week, we will not have game. Um, but after that, it will be five-ish straight weeks of game. Um, so honestly, if you enjoyed this, please, please let us know. Tweet about it. Send us tips. You know, uh, everybody here is... Um, so talented and i'm so happy to play a game with them um and so on that note uh we will uh let everyone do our plugs and help us say our goodbyes um tamla go ahead all right uh hello everybody my name is humna i use any and all pronouns and i am a ttrpg performer uh you can find me on twitter at h shahid underscore where i talk about all of the different projects that i'm a part of i'm on a variety of campaigns so uh, definitely go follow me there to see what i'm up to at any given point in time uh the one that's coming up most uh, close to today, though, is on Saturday. Uh, Transplaner RPG goes live at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And for those of you that don't know what Transplaner is, uh, Transplaner RPG is a D&D 5e homebrew actual play uh, live stream podcast that is set in an anti-colonial, non-orientalist world. Uh, so if you have not seen it, it is an all-transgender cast. It's wonderful. It's lovely. You should come check us out. And I will pass it over to Jay. Hello. Hi, I'm Jay Justice. I'm on all the things as that Jay Justice. I'm also a streamer on Twitch. I play fun video games. I do cosplay, cooking streams, all that jazz. I got like 120 costumes and I post a lot of stuff on Twitter and Facebook. So feel free to follow me there. Um, this is the only RPG I'm doing right now. Yay, I managed to get my schedule somewhat reasonable. And yeah, definitely support Friends Who Roll Dice. This channel is awesome. So if you're just rating into it, you should absolutely follow them. And next is Lopez, I think. Is it me? Is it's it you? me? Is it <laughs> could me? be you. I'm not sure. It could be me. Could it be me? All right. Uh, hi, everybody. It's your local fuck up cleric here. Uh, if you're looking for me, if you're looking for me and more of my content, more of what I do, you can follow me on Twitter at cleric underscore 34. I also have TikTok where I post shitty uh, comedy videos. You can do there. But if you want to hear me more in the TTRPG space uh, here, but I have a podcast with a scary dog friend on Twitter, uh, which is called MFA, a.k.a. Monster Fuckers Anonymous, a show where we talk about monsters, uh, talk about their lore, their mythology, everything about them, and we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10 whether or not you should be having intercourse with those monsters. Uh, some are good, some are bad, most of them are mid, but all of them are sexy. Uh, we're currently on a break, so we just have a backlog, uh, so we're kind of getting a backlog. So if you want to get caught up with the show, please check it out. Yeah, that's for me. Okay, I think uh, it's me now rounding rounding it out before we uh, leave with our fear, fearless leader. Um, hi, everybody. I'm O Katrina. You can find me anywhere on social media at O Katrina. That's O H C A T R I N A. Um, along with this TTRPG show, you can find me over on Starlight Beacon Transmissions doing all sorts of fun Star Wars RPG stuff over there. And you can also listen to my podcasts. That is plural. I am that guy. Uh, that's uh, Fight Club Far, Far Away, where I break down all the best Star Wars battles. Uh, Pedro Pascal, which I co-host with my friend Rachel Leishman, where we talk about all things Pedro Pascal. Uh, and eat the... Or, no, wait. Uh, and... Uh, oh, 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 what is it? My Glup show. Um, gosh, what's Glup? The all-new show about minor star wars characters and how much we love them uh coming this september um that's more than enough for me uh thank you so much for watching i'm gonna go hide somewhere now <laughs> um <laughs> god i love everyone here and how impressive and wonderful they are um and now it's time for you to know how impressive and wonderful i am i am victor um you can find me on on twitter at, at at Villain Vincencio. Um, 
I'm going to be premiering in another um, AP next Tuesday. On uh, we're going to be playing a Wander Home game on over on TTRPG. Um, <laughs> uh, you can find my writings on uh, Splat th- in Splat Three with Touched, which is about uh, romance and games and um, intimacy in games. It is on sale uh, next week if you didn't uh, back the. Um, the game the i forget which uh website it's on but we had like a we had a crowdfunding thing and then it came out and honestly i really love the piece that i wrote and i'm the centerfold so like you guys really need to pick it up (laughs) i mean technically i'm not the centerfold in pdf but i'm cool (laughs) um and i'm gonna i'm working on several writing projects i'm working on several games so Follow me on Twitter to uh, follow those projects. That's it for me. And last but not least, hi, I'm Mayor. I am the producer, part of the leadership team, and the card keeper for this game. Um, just a couple of quick, uh, you know, channel stuff. Uh, the Mind and the Martyr, our D and D five E long term campaign, will be coming back sometime in early to mid August. Please keep an eye on our Twitter. And on Sunday at one p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will have the premiere of Demon's Creek, our all POC Wild West Urban Shadows game run by at Reliable Elliot. I am so excited and it's going to be really fucking dope. So um, hell yeah. Um, As a reminder, if you love what we all do, um, this game has a chip jar. We all worked really hard on this campaign and it's even going to it's just going to get better from here on out. And also just an extra thank you to at art of levity who did the character art for this campaign they did absolutely amazing thank you so much they have commissions open right now so go check out their twitter i just put it out on um in chat and stick around we are going to go do a raid but i hope everyone has an amazing evening and we will see you in two weeks bye